Oh, good evening, my friends. I was muted all along. <laughs> I, I couldn't hear you guys. Good evening. Once again, uh, welcome. My name is Faisal Hassan. I'm your member of provincial parliament for York Southwestern. Tuning uh, Faisal Hassan, NDP, Facebook.com. I would like to take to start, I would like to start by thanking everyone for joining this evening for a very important discussion. Prior to COVID-19, many people in our community were struggling and the pandemic has only made things worse. Ontario Disability Progr Support Program recipients, seniors on fixed income, unemployed individuals, these vulnerable communities have had to navigate a system that threatens them as an afterthought. And the support they are receiving is nowhere near enough. Insufficient income supports of hunger and tenacious housing are impacting people's physical and mental health, and it requires urgent action. These stories often go unheard, but I'm happy to have the opportunity to shed some light on the circumstances these individuals are facing on a daily basis. Tonight, I have invited local leaders with expertise and lived experience to share their thoughts on the gravity of the current situation. We'll discuss the challenges our neighbors are facing and the solutions that will help respect the inherent value in every member of our community. I also wish to acknowledge at this time, the land that we now know as York Southwestern is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit the Anishabe, the Chipwe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations Inuits, Métis people. I have distinguished and leaders in our community uh, who are here tonight to shed light tonight about poverty and vulnerability in our community. I have Diane Stapleton, Chair, of the board Western Area Emergency Support Food Bank, who are doing a fantastic job in our community. Also, Ryan Noble, Executive Director, North York Harvest Food Bank. We also have Janet Jones, and also an experienced uh, uh, leader in our community with disabilities, with lived experience as a recipient of Ontario a Disability Support Program. Bob Murphy, Chair of Acorn York. Southwestern and also a lived experience, also a recipient of Ontario Disability Support Program, Saad Talia, also a experienced uh, leader, active in the community serving on multiple boards and advisory group, also a recipient of Ontario uh, Disability Support Program. And also we have B. Lee, also who is also Ontario Works recipient with a lived experience. First, uh, welcome. Uh, I would like for us to start with Diane Spolton, <laughs> Stableton of the um, Western Area Emergency uh, Support Food Bank. I know you are doing a fantastic with little resources. Uh, tell us, I know many folks receive a food bank there. Uh, tell us what your uh, challenges are and what are the uh, issues that uh, the community is experiencing or folks who are coming to you. Okay, yeah, hi everybody. Um, thanks for having us participate. Uh, I, Faisal, it's, uh, it's great to be here. Uh, the food bank is, that is located in York Southwest and that covers Weston and Mount Dennis uh, has uh, always been busy, uh, but uh, certainly since March, uh, we have seen a dramatic increase. Uh, our numbers have gone from an average of about 650 visits a month last year for the last four or five months to about 2,500 visits a month now. So uh, as you can you know, imagine, that's a, a big increase. Um, people that are coming to the food bank uh, now are people who had been able to uh, 
support themselves prior to COVID, um, as some of them. Uh, and so that's why our numbers have increased. We see, um, we see a lot of seniors we're supporting with direct delivery to Eagle Manor where seniors live. Uh, and we're, um, you know, we're working very closely with North York Harvest to, uh, they support us with food and we support the community. We purchase a lot of food um, and uh, we're very aware in the last few months we had to move, change our whole system of, of supporting the community. Uh, we're offering up pre-packed hampers of food which is not what we were doing before where people got to select the kinds of food they wanted and needed for their families. Uh, we're serving people out of doors. Uh, all of these things are not ideal uh, in terms of uh, helping uh, vulnerable communities. Uh, if anybody has any doubt that um, that poverty in Toronto is racialized, they just would have to come to the food bank and see pretty quickly that the majority of those coming to the food bank are people of color, um, people with disabilities, and, um, and, you know, and, and vulnerable seniors. So uh, poverty is a big deal in York Southwestern. Um, Food banks are not the answer to that. And uh, we would love to see things like ODSB and OW change to better support the people that need that support uh, so that they can make their own decisions on how they feed their families. Thank you. We'll come to you back, uh, Diane. I will also bring now Ryan Noble, Executive Director, uh, North York Harvest Food Bank who's also based right here in our community in York Southwestern. I have visited uh, several times and they are doing a fantastic work of actually uh, distributing uh, food and support to members of our community. Ryan. Good, uh, good evening uh, and thank you. Um, just as Diana said, thank you for hosting this, this very important conversation. Um, I would echo a lot of the comments that uh, Diana uh, made with regards to the situation at Weston uh, area emergency uh, services. We have the, the, the same thing is happening sort of across the board. So as North York Harvest, we're a distribution hub. Uh, we collect food, we collect funds, uh, we do fundraising, and then we distribute that out through agencies like Waze, um, through groups like, uh, like, like the group that Diana is a part of. Um, so really it's, it's part of that entire system. Across our network, which is really sort of a large swath of Northern Toronto, uh, we've seen usage is up 75% uh, over the last 90 days. So if we look at June, July, August of 2019 versus 2020, 75% across uh, the network. Uh, but we've also had, and uh, I won't get into too many numbers, but um, 16 of our food banks, which is how we would cover uh, that, that territory, only 11 of them are open right now. So the, 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 in a nutshell, the situation that we're facing is a, a spiking demand, uh, an inc a significant increase in demand being absorbed over a, a fewer number of agencies, fewer number of staff, fewer number of volunteers to actually provide services. Uh, the, where that becomes quite scary is when we look out, we know from the recession in 2008 uh, or the financial crisis in 2008 that it took about two years uh, for food bank usage to spike. And that makes some sense, right? If you were to lose a job, uh, it'll take a while uh, for many people before they, they, they go to a food bank. And in some cases, you know, we often say the reason why people go to a food bank is, is a, a final capitulation. Um, you know, when they've used all credit, savings, assets, everything, um, you know, often, often our agencies that we serve are, are sort of the last, last line of support that people can turn to. It's really a community response to, to what is a systemic crisis. Um, and so, uh, again, if we know from 2008, it's, it took about two years for us to see that, that spike. And so we expect the same thing, if not more significant, to happen over the next two years. Um, and this is where our response, just as Diana said, uh, is not sufficient. Uh, it, we're very proud of the work that we do. We're very proud of the work that our agencies do. Um, but these are community responses to a crisis. And what we really need is, is uh, policy 
responses. What we really need is structural systemic uh, solutions in terms of just, and uh, you know, not to keep quoting Diana, but Ontario, uh, you know, changes to social assistance reform, affordable housing, I think are, are the two uh, I would, I would uh, focus on as two of the biggest blocks um, that we need to see improved if we're ever going to see usage of food banks start to come down. Well, thank you. I will, we'll come back to you. I will bring out Saad Talia, uh, an active uh, in the community serving on multiple boards, an advisory group um, who's also um, uh, have been really active in a lot of uh, courses. And I know you have a lot of uh, uh, stories to tell. I know. Uh, uh, share with us your thoughts. Thank you very much for having me here this evening, Fessel, and thank you for hosting this very important conversation. Um, uh, my name is Saad Talia, and I am a, a person with lived experience of mental health issues, uh, addictions, and which resulted in homelessness. And uh, I have been, uh, I'm, I consider myself a survivor of the system, right? Uh, even though I'm not completely out of it, obviously, um, since I am on ODSP. Um, having said that, I have, for the last five years, worked for uh, the Dream Team, which probably is familiar with it to everybody. However, we are a group of people with lived experience who speak for and advocate for a high quality supportive housing um, for people with mental health and or addiction issues. And uh, through the Dream Team, um, I have come to be invited on to other groups. Uh, I am currently part of the PWLE caucus uh, for the Toronto Alliance to End Homelessness. And via that group, um, I am now part of uh, the MAP Center for Research, which is part of uh, St. Michael's Hospital, the community expert group that they have just begun and we're working on some very great things. Currently, we're in a learning phase, but there are great things to come, and I look forward in the future to sharing them with you. Um, yeah, so I live in poverty, and I live in independent housing, and I am very glad to be here. Thank you, Fessel. Well, thank you, and I know you, we will be you, you a lot of thoughts uh, that you have. Uh, I have also uh, Bob Murphy and Jenna Jones and uh, me leave. Why don't I bring first Jenna Jones, who is also an activist on um, disability issues. You have many ideas. How, what, what, what are your thoughts tonight? Hi, uh, my name is Janet Jones. Uh, I've been on uh, disability for a little over 25 years and uh, gone through the system and uh, still on it. Uh, I think the thing that's bothered me the most is the shelter allowance because it's what 495 or something like that. Um, uh, anything over that you pay yourself, and that's a big part of why people are on uh, assistance need help in buying groceries and that when you consider most of your money goes to just putting a roof over your head. Um, the thing is also is if it, it, the, the, whatever they limit they set, if your rent is less than that, you just get what your rent is. It's not like uh, free money for whatever. We're just asking that they be able to pay a reasonable amount for, um, for your region. And uh, that's a big thing that, that needs to happen. I also work part-time. I work uh, a day and a half uh, at a retail store, um, partly because I've been able to get a lot of um, help with uh, chronic pain. And um, the other thing that, that people got, oh, you got a job, but yeah, great. Um, it is great. But the re big part of why I have it is that my employer has a strong commitment to community living, people with disabilities. Um, they, they accommodate me before I have to say anything. 
So it's it's both sides. It's you know being prepared, but there's also a big need for employers who will take on people with accommodations. Uh, so um, I uh, look forward to uh, this conversation. Thank you, Faisal, for inviting me, and I'm really looking forward to hearing the com the conversation between us. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, uh, and um, Bob Murphy is an activist. He's also a chair of the ACORN, York Southwestern's um, uh, they're doing and organizing a lot of uh, positive things. And uh, Bob, uh, I know uh, poverty is, is affecting our community. Many of our um, members of ACORN are struggling as well. What are your thoughts and what can we change to, to improve things? Well, it, uh, I deal with uh, community members, uh, not just here in York Southwestern, but um, in uh, areas all over uh, uh, the GTA. Uh, I would just like to give a quick shout out to um, uh, Ryan and, and Diana that uh, um, uh, about the food banks. Um, I uh, spent uh, uh, five years as a volunteer at a food bank and my last year um, after um, uh, educating uh, myself better uh, in the advocacy office, nobody will see the day-to-day -day reality of the need of uh, sitting at uh, uh, in a building um, I, uh, uh, handing out uh, food hampers, uh, hampers for individuals that need it. You see the reality every day, and it's uh, it's it's quite an eye opener. It's a, it's an extremely humbling uh, um, uh, experience, and. Uh, we should all have the experience uh, of, of uh, volunteering at a food bank because it'll show you the uh, need of it. Um, um, I'm an Ontario disability recipient. I'm fortunate enough, uh, I get supported. I have a little small part-time job that allows me to eat. Janet, as you were saying, is uh, um, um, for me, I pay, uh, uh, my rent is below market rent, but I don't get, I'm not, I'm on the Toronto housing list, which uh, has never going to happen for me. Uh, I'm just getting too long in the tooth. Uh, the shelter for Ontario disability recipients is 497. What more is to say than that? Uh, uh, 497, we're going to go for 497. A uh, single individual on Ontario disability uh, is 1169. You allotted 479 for shel uh, for shelter and 672 for everything else. So the total is 1169. After I pay my rent, my rent is cheap. Uh, my rent is 82% of my Ontario disability. If I didn't have this part-time job, I would be out of a home. Um, our friend, Mr. Ford for the people and uh, um, uh, 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 his uh, government reduced the increase, the insulting increase of 3% to 1.5% him uh, and his uh, minion, uh, uh, Lisa McLeod, who he pushed aside after she did his dirty work, and uh, Vic Fideli. And I don't understand that, that, that uh, our friend Ford for the People comes out with a number for $2,000 for CERB. Uh, what Ontario Disability earned over $5,000 in last annual year were on disability. Doesn't that just tell you something. So therefore, we didn't we didn't qualify for uh, CERB. For those of us who had our minimal part-time jobs, uh, we were lucky to get the $100 subsidy for uh, personal protection equipment because we were earning part-time monies. Uh, I had to beg, I had to school my caseworker on the on on the the format why that $100 was initiated. Um, we get no case from our caseworkers. They're overloaded. Doesn't really matter to me what the reason is, but uh, they're not caseworkers; they're data entry clerks. Um, and if we come up with a number, if somebody comes up with a number of 1169 for somebody to survive and service two thousand dollars, who's doing the math? Why is there a big separation? Shouldn't we be learning off this and our continuous drag down through the media of Doug Ford? Is uh, is just a, a a way to demean and de de dehumanize a, a, an Ontario disability recipient that struggles for every day, and also for those seniors and Ontario disability recipients that since COVID started the beginning of March, we've lost all our therapy appointments, our physical therapy appointments, all our our surround supports. 
we've lost all those supports. We've lost all those um, therapy appointments. We've lost our transportation uh, allowances because we can't go to our therapy appointments. We're landlocked inside because we don't want to spend six fifty on a petri uh, petri dish, a bus that nobody's wearing their masks in in, uh, in 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 our area. So we can't afford to take transportation. We don't want to take transportation. We're landlocked, and we're just stuck here in uh, idle. Thank you. Uh, allow me to speak. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bob. Um, uh, I know that uh, job is an important and support. I mean, how can you live with that little amount of money and expect um, uh, if we're going to help people with ODSP and Ontario Works, uh, we're supposed to be, you know, providing a livable support. I, I know we have another guest. Um, uh, B. Lee is also an uh, Ontario Works recipient and with a lived experience. Um, I know we cannot see you, but can you hear us, B. Lee? Yes, I can hear you guys. Yes. So... So what is your thoughts? I know you are Ontario Works and the amount Ontario Works is given is less than the Ontario or DSP program. What is your challenges you're having at the moment? Well, first of all, I would like to thank you, uh, MPP Hassan, for having me. Uh, it's kind of last minute. <laughs> I only know that I have an hour before, so nothing is prepared, but I will speak from my heart with my live experience. Um, so thank you for having me and nice to meet you guys. Uh, good evening. Um, I'm an anti-poverty activist. Uh, I'm a uh, volunteer in many organizations and non-profit agencies. Um, so my passion is to fight for um, uh, people in poverty, including myself, uh, to my wandering work using the uh, systemic uh, approach, uh, try to you know bring a change, and so people lives can be uh, elevated uh, in that way. Um, and um, I I'm uh, uh, live um, city of poverty city of Toronto poverty deduction strategy live experience advisory group member. Uh, it ended three years, it ended this this year uh, from uh, 19, uh, 2017 to uh, 2020. So three years we are with the city, uh, like kind of like a wise city on uh, the issue of poverty, uh, poverty deduction. And I also have, a, 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 I was like quite a, a fortunate, quote unquote, to be on the Minister Duco, uh, the federal minister, uh, when they have this um, kind of like pilot uh, uh, ministerial, advisory, ministerial advisory committee on poverty. So I'm the only live experience in that committee. And uh, so I had a good time. You know, one year we all the experts, <laughs> like professor, uh, minister and the staff, and also all these senior uh, policy maker. Uh, and I learned a lot, you know, in that one year. And and also I'm 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 glad that you know I I was able to I was able to advocate and for some of the changes and the changes that they come through like for those uh, people on um, um, like uh, single individual the the rate of single individual have been increased uh, 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 more than uh, those who are like couple or uh, a family. Uh, so that, that's a good thing uh, on this uh, working income tax return. And also I fight for the uh, housing benefit for those who, people who are peculiar house like me. Uh, I mean, the federal government did give uh, $500 per month for people who are homeless to be housed or people who are in shelter to be housed, but not any allowance uh, benefit to those people who are already housed, but in peculiar uh, housing or uh, bad condition. Like a lot of rooming house there, yeah, the, the condition is very bad. Uh, so I, I fight for that. So we are, have to wait for the province, uh, see whether the problem will give us the, the amount that <laughs> allocated by the, by the federal government, uh, 250 per month. Uh, Hopefully that will come true. It's supposed to, to, to start this summer, but then because of a uh, pandemic, 
uh, COVID-19, uh, everything got on hold. Uh, so hopefully even the housing, National Housing Strategy Committee also got on hold. So hopefully when, I mean, the, the COVID-19 get uh, much better, hopefully everything will get to normal and get started again. Uh, I'm also co-founder of Social Assistance Coalition of Scarborough. Uh, uh, so our, our member mostly are like OWODSP uh, people. Um, so I'm I'm not from, uh, from I'm not from uh, MPP Hassan's riding. I'm from Scarborough. Yeah. Uh, I, I I I was homeless because of this high market rent. So housing is is my top priority in my advocacy. And then um, I I agree what uh, the 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 director of second house uh, say about you know the two things. One is the housing affordable housing, but I would say it would be like deeply affordable housing, not just affordable housing. And then also the um, the the increase of the income of this uh, social assistance. Um, yeah, it's kind of a shame. It's kind of a shame to get that hundred dollar like what uh, 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 Bob say. You know, I I didn't get the hundred dollar in April because the the case workers voicemail was always full. I can't even get through her. Finally, I had to call the reception and say, "Can you pass the message?" So, but they say because like you know, I didn't I didn't get it from the beginning, so they can only give me the the last three months. So I I didn't get the April one. Well, thank okay, you. I'll talk uh, more later. Yep. Thank thank you, Billy. I, I really appreciate for sharing uh, your thoughts on this, and I know that. Uh, it has been said that the uh, policy changes is required. I know that uh, Diane talked about uh, food bank is not only specific uh, members of our community. Poverty is affecting um, everybody, everybody in our community. And also those folks who are relying on this, uh, Diana, also include young people, students. Uh, 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 could you elaborate a, a bit about uh, because I want people to understand poverty is affecting a large members of our community. So um, what we have seen uh, is that uh, children and youth uh, are actually as a percentage of the population versus the percentage of people coming to the food bank, slightly underrepresented, though there is certainly still young people coming to the food bank, students coming to the food bank. Um, you know, the, the, big, the big chunk is definitely in the um, sort of 40 to 65 range. Um, people with mental health, disabilities, uh, addiction, um, housing uh, issues in, in the people that are coming to our food bank uh, tend, tend to have a lot of those issues, but that's on the gen, you know, pre-COVID. That was where the, the giant chunk of the people that came to us were, were from that group. Um, you know, we still uh, at least 10% our seniors, um, but what we're seeing now with COVID is many more uh, young, sort of in that uh, 25 to 40 age range uh, are coming to the food bank. And a lot of those people are, are ones that were working in service industry jobs, um, you know, uh, in hotels, cleaning rooms, a lot of people are coming who, you know, certainly English is not their first language. Um, so whether they're new immigrants, whether they're uh, um, in some cases uh, uh, refugees um, and or perhaps even undocumented workers uh, that, that come to get help. And, and we don't ask a lot of questions uh, people come to our door, we figure they're not here if they don't really need it. So we, we try to help everyone that comes. Um, York Southwestern has a very high poverty rate. And, um, you know, you just have to look at the stats to know that. Uh, and you just have to 
look at the various programs that are, are supporting people in our community. Um, but again, I, you know, and Ryan and other people have mentioned housing is massive. You can't, you can't possibly get housing of, of any kind of safe or decent housing for the kind of money that people get on any kind of social assistance rates. Um, and so, you know, pushing for things like a guaranteed annual income or um, something that will elevate uh, people's options by giving them a decent place to live and the ability to purchase food for themselves, you know, support for things like um, childcare. These are things that will make a massive difference for many people and help, it will help their health. I mean, it's been well documented. It will help their health, it will help their mental health, and it will make people way more productive members of society. There's no doubt in my mind. So we need to keep pushing the government at all levels to support people. Thank you. And that's very important. You mentioned very important point of housing. And housing is uh, usually over, over 1,000. Uh, I think, uh, Janet, yeah. scratch Janet. Uh, yeah, I just because it's timely, um, something was said in the legislature today uh, from the government side, uh, Jill Dunhill or something, uh, when asked, um, uh, she said, oh, that we've got discretionary funds in ODSB. So uh, uh, they've got a bunch of money. It, it's called discretionary. And like you said, you know, if you can't get through to your caseworker, um, I think that it'd be very easy just to um, add on to our checks, hit the button and, you know, pay a certain amount for, you know, singles or families or whatever, and just give us the money, but uh, no. I think, yes, I think the, the, the important housing is over 1,000, one bedroom over 1,000, it's unaffordable. I, I think it's a crisis and it began uh, in the 90, 1993, when uh, you know the federal government said that they're not going to get involved into into housing, and it trickled down into right here in our own province, and the province have downloaded into municipalities. I know Ryan, uh, you mentioned that uh, there are only eleven uh, locations that are open. What happens to the other five locations? Are they uh, using the other services, or what happens to those folks? Exactly. Exactly. They, exactly. I can see Diana pointing. Um, so that's right. So 75% across our network is the usage, but Diana gave you the, um, you know, the experience from uh, Waze. And I actually, I pulled those numbers as well, just so I, I had them for this call. Again, looking at June, July, and August, about 1,700 visits uh, in 2019 in York Southwest and 7,500 um, this year, you know, th three times. So 75% on average across those 16 agencies, but at an individual agency level, we're seeing huge spikes, 300, 400%. Um, I can tell you for, we, uh, North York Harvest operates three uh, spaces ourselves in addition to the distribution to the agencies. And our busiest one right now is at Bathurst and Finch. Uh, we, uh, we've actually had to move two of them into arenas. Um, so, we, you know, we, we do community food programs. That's, that's what we're sort of all about is, is really at a very local level. Um, and just as Diana said, I mean, we, we want to be giving a choice to, to, to our community members. This has really flipped the entire model on, on its head. Um, we're now, again, operating out of arenas. We've gone from a community food sort of programming approach to something that looks much more like disaster relief. Um, you know, and, and just as Diana said, we're pre-packing boxes and handing them out by the thousands out of, out of, out of arenas. Um, so that's, that's the real life. And just as Bob said, that's the on the ground, you know, what volunteers, those are real volunteers or real staff members that need to absorb that, uh, that demand and do it today in a way that is safe, not just safe in terms of crowding, but, you know, we've had to move programs outdoors. We're planning to do that throughout the winter. Um, that's going to be a very difficult, challenging uh, period of time and and you know we're 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 nervous and and as we look ahead to that but we are faced with no other choice 
um, in order to, to, to be able to get food out to communities who need it, uh, but be able to do that in a way that is protecting the safety of everybody involved. Very good. And those of you who are joining us, you're joining us live uh, at facebook.com, Faisal Hassan NDP. And I know uh, there's a discussion is going on now on the Facebook and we'll try to um, incorporate if you have any questions or any uh, suggestions and comments, uh, we will also share um, with, with the rest of you. Um, I know, I mean, if, if yes, uh, Saad, yes, I was about to come to you, yes. One of the things, all right, so um, I've never been, I'm South Asian by, base, by uh, extraction, and uh, the truth of the matter is that we don't talk about money, all right? You never ask how much something cost. So it took me a, a, a very long time to learn how to uh, own my poverty, right? Uh, one part is trying to deny it. It's like, no, 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 I have the money. It's like, no, you don't. And you got to be blunt about it, right? Otherwise, you get sucked into situations where um, it's, it's a just shameful and an embarrassment. But anyway, having said that, um, I take my hat off to the food banks. Uh, I currently do use one. And uh, my, uh, you know, some of the, the difficulty of living in poverty and engaging with the system while being part of advocacy groups and that kind of thing where you can talk things over with other people. And I know that uh, donations to food banks are down. And, uh, but when you go to a food bank, the hard part is everybody's screaming at you, specifically because I'm a diabetic. Everybody's screaming at you going, uh, you know, oh, you should be eating healthy. Eating healthy is expensive. That's right. Right? That's For right. anybody who ever <laughs> sat down and looked at their grocery bills, specifically the fruit and vegetables section, right? And it's getting more expensive. Okay. Um, so having said that, uh, the food bank uh, food that comes when I get it every month, it has to be supplemented with quote unquote fresh or real food, whatever you want, whatever that might be. Um, and it, everything as we know has gone up 20% in the pandemic, all right, if not more. And obviously there are certain things that are not available at all, considering that they might come from the States or they might come from far away or whatever, or they're just, you know what? I bought paper towels. I paid almost $10 per pack of six at Shoppers Drug Mart. $10. They say it's, but you're desperate. You have, you need it. You have to. Um, the, the idea of poverty, of living in poverty and saying that and, and brushing off the, the, the mental image of what somebody who is broke or poor looks like. And the truth of the matter being that there are things you deny yourself, there are things that you budget in your head and even a $5 loss or a $10 loss is painful. It's like a sharp jab to your heart for a second because it means that you can't do something else which wasn't very great in anybody's book for $10. I went out, I bought a, uh, yesterday, I bought a floor mat and I put down my, and then later in the grocery store in Metro, I put down the basket and somebody pilfered that little $10 floor mat from my basket. And it was like, now I can't go and have a burger. And this is simple shit. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Uh, pardon my French. Um, having said that, um, when we talk about overall income, some months ago, uh, the, the Toronto Magazine, right? They, they had an article about how much it takes to live in this town. 
and they said that the minimum required was 40,000 a year. 40,000. And that meant that you had about $250 discretionary income per month once everything else had been paid. As of last year, I declared $19,000. That is $1,000 less than I had to declare to enter this country 20 years ago. At which point, at that point, poverty level was 22,000. Nobody looks at what the poverty level is now. Right, I mean the dollar, the dollar cutoff. Mm. Because to look at the dollar cutoff, I live in this apartment, I pay for this apartment, 497 like all the others. It's a very nice apartment. I turn on the camera and show you. I don't care about showing the whole world. Right? It's a nice apartment. I live in North, in Western. So what might be a very nice apartment downtown is, a, is in an area which has poverty. It has no opportunities. The young walk around with nothing to do. We need help. We're desperate for it, if, but we're also afraid of the, any community of marginalized people is going to be very reluctant to engage because they've traditionally not been groups of people that engaged with society, right? Society doesn't want you, they marginalize you. Why would you engage with them? And yet we have to, we must. So, you know, within this in, internally, within this community, we need to get together and, and have a voice, right? Um, I hope for all our sakes that our voices get heard because I don't want to see my friends and my colleagues and other people, uh, innocent, dropping like flies, right? Thank you for listening. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. That was very, very powerful. I know uh, we're getting close to the um, our time. I know that. Um, 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 I know. Uh, uh, I I did just talk to you, uh, B Lee. Did you want to add something quickly, and uh, uh, shortly? Yeah, I think. Uh, I think I can add is uh, the pandemic really show, you know, the inequity you know, of, of people uh, uh, living on social assistance. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, especially the the people on OW, you know, with that 800, below 800 per month, you know, you, you can even live a life. You know, I mean, my rent is already cheap, you know, in a, in a shabby basement, you know, uh, uh, still like, you know, 450, you know, a tiny room, just one bed and one table is that you can even <laughs> have, 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 have space to walk. Um, I mean, but with, with the, 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 the shelter they give, the money they give is like 300 something. I have to cover my basic, you know, to, 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 to my rent. That do not really give me much to live on. And then because I cannot use the kitchen, you know, I, during pandemic really, I, I, I see the real poverty in me. You know, like before I, I used to have lots of meetings, so I eat in the meeting. You know, sometimes they had, they had food, you know, in the meeting, so I eat there, you know, um, or, or I go to the drop-in and eat. Uh, uh, in winter time, I, I go to out of cold and sleep, so I eat the, in the out of cold, right? So most of the time my meal is, is, is soft in those kind of area. Uh, um, but then but then with the pandemic, I, I hardly can go anyway. Like every, I have to stuck in, 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 the, in, the, in the cold room. You know, I wear my winter coat uh, year round, you know, even in the summertime, I still have to wear my winter coat. And and then um, uh, I, I, because like the, 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 I mean, eating out is so expensive. So during pandemic time, I, I only can eat like one meal a day. And that I think two weeks ago, my friend came to me and say, what happened to you? So skinny. <laughs> I said, what do you think? <laughs> I only eat one meal a day, and and that one meal is not really nutritious meal, 
you know, we, even with the cheapest, cheapest combo, you almost cost you already uh, uh, 10 bucks. You know what I mean? So, so like, you know, so I mean, I'm really thankful, you know, people can have a kitchen to cook. They can go to a bank and get some, you know, grocery uh, 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 you know, things to cook. But with people who have no, no, no use of kitchen, that's like, you know, there's no way you can really, you know, uh, have a healthy, uh, a healthy uh, meal. And I think, I think, um, I think the government, the three level government need to see that, you know, um, I mean, they did give, give, you know, like a, a benefit to people, but those people are on workforce. The people who are on workforce is much, much better. I mean, I mean, if we compare to others, of course, not good, but it's much, much better who are on people than people who are not on workforce, right? I'm not on workforce. So the only thing you get is like, if you get the lucky like to get the hundred bucks start from April to July is 400. But most of people don't get that hundred bucks in, in April because they can get hold of the caseworker. So later on, they change from May to July. Uh, auto, auto automatically, you can get the hundred bucks. So they only get three months. Uh, if people cannot get a hold on, on uh, uh, the caseworker, they still can get three months, but not the, the, the 400. And, and, and then um, that's all you get. But then, I mean, the government didn't think, you know, we have to spend the same money, you know, getting all this uh, uh, sanitizer, getting all this mask, uh, you, you know, those uh, glo gloves, you know, those kind of thing. Like other people need, we still, you know, those who are not on workforce still need it, right? You, have, you When you go outside, you still have to, you know, prevent yourself from, from you know, contact with people, right? You're keeping the physical distancing. So this, this all these things cost money, especially during pandemic time. I heard... Um, one of my my committee member in my food security committee uh, network, um, uh, she's she, she's a, a public public health nurse. She said when she go went and bought the sanitizers, it cost her uh, twenty some bucks for one bottle, and it used to be like what two three bucks, you know it's like how many how many how many times triple you know. Because of pandemic, everything is like increased. Even the grocery is increased. My friend who can cook, she says you go to grocery, the, the vegetables is all increased. And and it's like, mm, I mean, like, look at those like senior, right? Those like all oh, on CPPD, they get a uh, six hundred. You know, much better than you know those people who are on association, not on the workforce. So I think, I think, I think, I think, uh, 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 um. Mm, three level government, mm, I, I think it's really neglected this group of people. That's why I'm, 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 I'm like we are kind of getting a, a group of people and writing to MPP, you know, about okay. this issue. Yeah. Well, very good. Thank you. Um, uh, definitely, we are coming to closing. I just want you to be uh, to, to be short and um, and to your concluding remarks. I'll go to Janet and be brief, please. Yeah, the, the, the aspect that we haven't been talking about yet is the whole area of the working poor. Mm -hmm. That most jobs are um, that the average person can, can get a hold of are minimum wage or close to that. And, um, and if you, you probably isn't going to be full time, particularly if you're new and at it and um, so no benefits, fourteen dollars or close to that an hour, probably costs you uh, a, a quite a bit of that to to actually transportation and that to go to work, um, or and you could be a single parent or uh, with several children or even uh, two parent families. Um, how do you get beyond that? Uh, you don't make enough for daycare, and. Um, so it's it's very hard for anyone living uh, minimum wage. It's not a living wage, and uh, need the same um, uh, food banks. Probably need more clothing for going out to to work, um, and uh, so everything else kind of, and the stress of it. I mean, we have a lot of stress ourselves. But when you add uh, a family 
on uh, minimum wage and, and all the other responsibilities, it does a lot for your health too. Thank you, I appreciate it, uh, Janet, for your concluding remarks. And I'll come to Bob Murphy and just be brief. Go ahead, Paul. Okay, I'll make it very brief and uh, right to the point. And um, uh, I'm just going to say three words and uh, let's combine them all together. And, uh, uh, we can all determine on our own what the result is. Uh, adequate housing, forget about the term affordable housing, that doesn't mean anything. Nutrition and mental health. That's how I would like to close. Well, that's a very good point. And, uh, and then I will come to uh, Ryan Noble, the executive director of North York Harvest Food Bank. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess I'll sign off and, and um, just say the one thing that, um, you know, you mentioned that poverty affects everybody. And I really think that is true. Uh, and I think that's true actually across the income spectrum as well. So I'll just very, very briefly, uh, the Ontario Association of Food Banks 10 years ago, and they updated it last year, uh, did a study um, uh, what the cost of poverty was for the province of Ontario. And their, their number was $38 billion a year. And that's reflected in things like uh, lost productivity in the, in the workforce, criminal justice outcomes, uh, educational outcomes, uh, all these types of things. So, you know, we, we say things like we're all connected and uh, I think sometimes people see that in a philosophical or a spiritual sense and that's fine, uh, but that's very true in, in every sense of the word. That's true in an economic sense. So I think sometimes when we talk about policy, it's sort of positioned as we're weighing, you know, the economic responsibility versus the social responsibility, when in fact we reject that dichotomy. Um, and say that the, the, the data is quite clear. We know what the answers are. Bob summed them up in three words. Um, so so th this, isn't a, this isn't an issue of, uh, you know, the policy is too complex for us to figure out. I think it's just as uh, Saeed said, it's about us uh, uniting our voice together um, and working towards positive change. Uh, just very quickly, because I know you want me to wrap up. Um, I will flip that around as well. And I just, I like to, to remind people of this. In April of 2019, uh, when the Ford government um, announced at the time uh, pretty significant changes to public health, cuts to public health, um, we uh, saw a huge up to, uh, a huge sort of uprising at our food banks. Uh, we collected thousands of uh, signatures on petitions that um, Faisal, you uh, introduced it into yes. uh, the legislature. Right. Um, so I like to say, and we were we we had some um, partial successes there. So I like to remind everybody that right now as we're going through a pandemic and we're all paying attention to our public health units, um, the reason why we are all benefiting from that uh, in, in no insignificant part uh, is because uh, people that were experiencing poverty, people that were coming to food banks, uh, stood up and fought and worked together as part of broad coalitions. And we did have some success. And I know that's a small piece, and um, but all of us are better off because uh, uh, this community rallied uh, at that time. So we can we can continue to do so. So thank you. Well, thank you. And uh, uh, Saad, would you have another short summary? Uh, quick, uh, like Bob, to summarize? No? You're fine. Okay. Um, just, uh, if you, they, they talk about walking a mile in somebody else's shoes. All right. If, you looked at any one payment, you meaning the outside world and not those of us living in this world. But if you just looked at the, at the, the justice of it, right? For something that may be just one payment in your life, it may be your mortgage, it may be part, your, part, your half of the mortgage or your car payment. That is what any one of us lives on. And that's what you're doing for one, you call it a necessity. Those of us who have to live without it call it a, a luxury. But um, <clears throat> the truth is that everything, we are all tied for the simple thing. If I don't smile at you on the subway when you're slumming it, right? Don't blame me. Right? Blame the fact that you parked the Mercedes at someplace else. All right, and you're just in the subway because we have to take it. And we deal with it every day. And we deal with food banks. And we deal with doing without. All right. 
Think about mm. doing without yourself. Practice it for a time. See how you like it. And then you would wonder why you would like that the rest of us have to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Saad. And uh, welcome to um, uh, Diane uh, Sp Stableton, uh, of the uh, chair of the board of Western Area um, um, Support uh, Food Bank. Emergency, sorry, Western Area Emergency uh, Support uh, Food Bank. Uh, okay, just quickly, um, in my, op my opinion, the strongest societies are ones that uh, support and lift up its struggling members. And until our governments stand up and do that, we are not a strong society. That's it for me. Well, thank you, Diane. Uh, thank you, Janet. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, uh, uh, Ryan, Ryan. And thank you, Saad, and also uh, B. And uh, folks, uh, those of you who have been watching us live, uh, uh, facebook.com, NDP. I'm so sorry that we couldn't include your comments and, uh, um, and your discussions there. Um, as you have heard tonight, um, these are very uh, trying times for vulnerable communities right across the province, and especially right here in York Southwestern. People need support. And while some individuals have seen their needs met, too many individuals have been left out. We need increased income support for these vulnerable communities to ensure uh, they can afford to eat and live with dignity. We need to provide a truly affordable housing options to see to these vulnerable community members can keep a roof over their head and those and for those dealing with these crushing burdens we need to be there with the physical and mental health resources they need i join these communities in their disappointment with support that has been provided to date they deserve a partner that will work with them on real solutions, rather than a government looking for every opportunity to cut corners. Thank you to everyone for joining us uh, tonight. And thank you to my guest again. Thank you to Janet. Thank you to Ryan, uh, Diana, Saad, Bob, and B. Uh, uh, Lee. Uh, thank you to you uh, for participating in this uh, important discussion. I'll say to you, um, thank you and good night and take care. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.